Hi, this is Larry Wells, and I want to tell you about the day, or actually the week, that the world changed. It was the first week in September 1991. I had been away for just over three weeks in California being trained in as a master uh, practitioner of neuro-linguistics programming. And I had returned to my hometown and to the church where I was one of three pastors. Uh, th there was a senior pastor, there was me, and then there was a, a younger man who was a pastor. He did most of the youth work. He was also in charge of our television ministry. And they, it just seemed like there was something different. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But something had changed uh, while I was gone during those just over three weeks. And it was, uh, well, it was pleasant. I was glad to see the change, but I couldn't quite understand it. For example, uh, the younger pastor, Paul, who's just uh, seven years younger than I am, often behaved as if he was like 20 years younger. And I uh, sometimes wondered if he wasn't just one of the kids uh, in the youth group, but uh, he had these, what I thought to be harebrained ideas that came out of left field, didn't make much sense to me, but uh, they seemed to be perfectly okay for him, and it was, you know, we got along really well, but I just thought he was a little goofy. And the senior pastor also had changed, too. We had always been good friends and, and worked well together, uh, but he had suddenly become changed in the sense that he was more of a colleague than my superior and that felt good but it was a little bit confusing to me the rest of the staff in similar ways had made changes that that uh, it just was a much more pleasant place to be and these people were good people they had always been good people but now it seemed like they were just excellent better people to be with uh, also i noticed that my kids too my three children had were off at college and they had come home for the weekend and you know how young people in college all, don't always make the best decisions the best choices available to them and that had always sometimes been an irritation to me and it, it just seemed like they had grown up and part of it uh, grown up more at least and part of it was partly because they were out on their own a little more and away from uh, mom and dad but uh it was uh, it, it was nice it was just uh I don't know how to explain it. It just it just seemed different. And I, I didn't really catch on to what was going on until one day I was in conversation with the, the senior pastor and Paul happened to, the younger pastor happened to be there. And after our conversation was ended and the senior pastor went back to his office, Paul started laughing. I said, what are you laughing about? He says, I can't believe how you relate to him now. What happened to you in California? I said, well, I don't know. Nothing seemed to happen to me. Why? Why do you ask? He said, well, you, you, just, you just behave differently. And that was the first clue. And then later that week, I got another clue. My older daughter was on the phone with one of her friends, and she said, you know, my dad's been acting really weird since he's gotten back from California. It's a good weird, but it's strange. I don't quite know how to, what to make of it. And I thought my world had changed, and in fact, my world had changed. That is, my model of the world had changed. I was living differently. I was experiencing more of what I wanted out of life and out of my interactions with other people. And it was because of my internal map, my understanding of the world had been transformed. I didn't try to make it different. I wasn't working at making it different. It was just naturally happening. And that's how it is with neurolinguistics programming. I'd when you do good work, you just change your behaviors without even trying. And part of that transformation of the world's model came from some of their basic presuppositions. That is that the map is not the territory. The internal map that I have or the model of the world that I have is not the only model. The other people have different models and the, their model may be just as valid as mine. Uh, the other, one of the other presuppositions has presuppositions, that is those, the things that you, that you suppose to be true, even though they may not be, but you act as if they are true because it's more useful to act that way to presuppose those things. So one of the things that we presuppose is that people respond to their own internal maps of reality. 
they also, that means that their behavior makes sense to them because of the map they're using. Also, people tend to make the best choices they know how to make at the time. Uh, there may be five, five things that were, you could choose from, but if four of them are not available, you make the only one that's left, whether it's I can't do it, I don't know about it, uh, or some, some, whatever reason, you make the best choice that you know how. And when I begin to, to understand those presuppositions, it began to change the way I experienced life. My world had changed. And that's the way it is with neuro-linguistics programming. People come in to see me so that they can change their world. 